Hello everyone and welcome back to another tutorial. So in this story is going to be about the directional dodge row system. So when you hold W and when you press the left mouse click, so you can dodge forward, as you can dodge backwards as well, dodge to the left and right. So this is going to be like a four directional dodge row system. And let's go for it. And we are also going to be using root motion to drive the location of the character with the animation. We're also going to be tweaking the animation montage so we can have a smooth animation blending. So let's start the tour. Well, first thing, I'm going to add the key here. So I'm going to add the left mouse button. So as soon as we press the left mouse button and we're going to check if the character is holding any key that we want to dodge. So for example, if the character is holding the W and the player presses, sorry, if the player presses the left mouse button while he's holding W, we're going to dodge forward and so on. So the first thing we're going to do here, I'm going to create a macro. A macro is going to be useful for us to be executing multiple code. So by using macros, we can reuse the code that we've just executed. So let's name this macro to be dodge row. Dodge row. Then we can double click on that. And then you have inputs and outputs. Uh, so we're going to add a branch here. And we're going to check if the player is holding, for example, the W key. So we're going to write is input key down. Uh, you can uncheck this option here and get it. So as you can see, it requires a target. The target is going to be the get player controller. I think it's not this one. I'm going to right click again, get player controller. I think it's this one right here. Make sure it has the player index of zero. Then you can plug that into there, into the target. And we want to play these animations here. So I have these animations here. Roll backwards or forward, left, right. I'm going to click on one of them. Just for you to preview what's the animation like. I have some twist. I have some uh, problems with the bounce of the shoulder. It's pretty easy to fix this. Just gotta add here. You just gotta twist the bones. If you have this problem, you know, you just gotta fix it by doing this. So you're going to have to be doing this in all the animations you have. Well, in case you download the animations from my Patreon, you're gonna have to uh, fix this by rotating the twist bones, like so. Uh, so the first thing I do here, I've already done, which is to make a montage out of the animation sequence. So I have this montage here of the character rolling backwards. And on the asset details, I have the blend out uh, time, which is set to be dot 55. That's for the roll backwards. Now, if I go to the roll forward, it's dot five. But uh, you're going to choose depending on what you need. Uh, if you have a, if you want to have a more smooth transition of blending the animation out, uh, the thing that I I don't want to have is the character to pose on this position here. I don't want to. I only want him to roll, and that's it. I want to get my my uh, player to have the movement back. Uh, I want my player to have total control of the play of the character as soon as uh, the character uh, stops uh, rolling like so. Um, so we're going to here on the inputs, I'm going to drag it to the here. So we can execute from the macro, we're going to drag and drop the dodge roll there. And as soon as we press it, then we're going to execute this macro. So uh, we're going to create we're going to create a montage variable. So how you can do that? Let's firstly get the play montage node. I'm going to turn this option back on, and here the animation you can uh, select that node. And here on the skeletal mesh component, I'm going to drag my mesh of the character that is going to play the animation. And here on the montage to play. I've, I already have a variable created, 
which is called Dodge Direction Montage. Uh, you can, if you want to create a variable, you can just right click on Montage to play and promote it to variable. So as I have right here, I don't need to do that. So I'm going to just get it and place that to the play to the Montage to play and leave it like that. Uh, so actually, you don't need to do this. Sorry. You can just drag and drop your Dodge Direction Montage and set it. So we're going to give a little bit of space here and we're going to connect out of true to the play montage. So we're going to be able to play this montage here. So whatever value you put inside here is going to be played. So what? Uh, so we want to play the montage respectively to what the player inputs. So if the player is holding W, then we're going to want to play the forward animation. Uh, but for doing that, we're going to drag and drop the uh, voltage here to the inputs. So if you come back here to the event graph, we're going to see that we have the option. We have the input option. So uh, to place uh, whatever animation we want to have here. Uh, I also want to drag off the key here and drag it to there. So you have two options now. You have the option to select the animation montage to play and the option to select which key you want to, to make your character to press. And uh, that's going to make everything happen. So here on the key, I'm going to type W. And here on the dodge direction montage, I'm going to type uh, the, sec the exact name that I've named my animation montage to be, which in my case is row forward. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to select the asset here. Use as a browser from selection. Uh, so that's the first uh, dodge row animation uh, setup that I have. Uh, let's try it out. Let's try it now. But uh, before that, make sure your animation sequence, your animation has root motion. Because if I go here on the character and bones and show all hierarchy, so it's going to show you all the hierarchy of the bones. Uh, you can have pretty much a view of what bones we have here. So here on, so here on root motion, we have the op the option to enable root motion or disable it. So what happens if I disable the root motion? So as you can see, the the character moves. Uh, like that. As you can see, this red line represents that the root motion is disabled between quotes. Uh, so if you enable it, then the red line that you see there, I think it's the root bone, it disappears. So that means that the character is going to be, to, is going to be able to move, it's going to be able to change the location depending on, on the root motion. So if I disable it, then you see, as you can see, the which direction the character is going to go for when the root motion is enabled. So that's basically it. So I'm going to save and make sure all the animations have this option on, enable root motion. And you have force, force root lock to off and this to on. So I'm going to try it out. Uh, I'm going to press on play here. So as soon as I hold the W and I press the left mouse button. As you can see, my character plays the animation and he moves with the root bone. So the root bone drives the, the character location to the desired location of what of whatever the location <laughs> is set. So this is, I use dodge forward That's it. As you can see, my character kind of, you can see the slow motion. My character kind of goes to the to the pose that I don't want him to. I just want I just want him to be able to dodge, and that's it. To go back to the normal state that he was, uh, that he has to be, right? So if you go here on inside our macro. We're gonna want to stop that uh, animation montage. So how we can do this? So we can drag off this, which is the output of what of whatever the animation is going to play. 
so I'm going to drag off this and say stop animation montage. And here, before that, I'm going to out of play montage, I'm going to set a delay. And this delay is going to be dot 62. So the value that we put here on the ratio is going to depend on your animation length and your specific needs. So I'm going to let it like this. And I'm going to press on play here. And when I press, when I hold W and I press left mouse button, then my character, yeah, it's a little bit better. That's the result I need. Uh, the duration here is going to depend on your length, uh, on the length of your animation. Maybe your animation takes one second, and um, maybe you want a duration of dot eight. It's up to you. If you want your character to rotate in the specific uh, rotation that the camera is pointing at, then we can just do it like this. So we're going to get the uh, base aim rotation. Now we're going to get the actor rotation. Now, as you want to keep only, as you want to change only the Z axis, then we're going to split this and put these values there. And we're going to get the base in rotation and drag off, drag off this and set to be the new rotation of the character. So it's going to rotate the character uh, like this. So in fact, if I'm facing the camera here, so it's going to rotate the character. And if I press W, then as you can see, the character is really going to move forward. So it doesn't matter what angle I aim at, it's all is going to work. Now I'm going to teach you how you can duplicate all these nodes here and make a sequence of them. So maybe you want to use the A key for you to be able to dodge row to the left and uh, same as for the other uh, for the other keys so i'm going to duplicate the dodge row animation here the dodge row macro and i'm going to duplicate it four times and i'm going to access it and here of on outputs as you can see false is executed only when the, the this input key is not does not match uh it does not match the character the player's input so if i drag it to false here to the outputs and go back to the event graph as you can see i'm gonna have the false outputs here so if the character let's say for example the player presses the left mouse click to dash dash row and he does not press the w key so what's going to happen is that it's going, this event here is going to be executed. And if that event is executed, then, oh, maybe the character is pressing the A. And then we can change the value here. So let's change, click here on this keyboard icon and press A. So it's going to check, oh, if the character is not playing, is not pressing the W, maybe he's pressing A. So we're going to check for that. And we're going to do a sequence of checkings here. <laughs> um, but... So for, I, I think for beginning, for the star, we can row forward. Uh, for the second, we can check if the character is pressing the S, so we can row backwards. So I'm going to type here, row backwards. And here, if I want to, I want to check if the character is rolling to, is pressing A. So if the character is pressing A, we're going to row to the left. And if the character is pressing D, then you want the character to row right, right? Uh, now we're going to connect false to here, false to here, and it's going to check all of the keys. So if the character is not pressing W, then it's going to check, oh, is, this, is the player pressing S? Then if, if the player is S pressing A, it's pressing D, so it's going to check for all these keys here. Uh, we're going to compile save. I think this should work. I believe so. So, like this. Uh, 
think this is perfectly fine for me. So I think that's going to be it. But uh, we have only one problem that I haven't fixed yet, which is to prevent the player from spamming the button. So it's going to happen like this, right? One of the things you can do, you can create. We can create a boolean variable and say is rolling. Let's say, for example, is rolling question mark. And then we can set that after the set for, uh, set actor rotation like this. Then we can check that on. As soon as it finishes, then I want to set this to be off. But here on the beginning, I want to check if the player is already rolling. So if it is true, I'm going to get a branch. And we're going to check if the character is, is already rolling. So if the character is already rolling, is to false. Is false, then the character is not rolling. Then we can play the animation montage and blah, 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 right? So that's going to be it. Let's see if it's going to work. I've never done this. Now I'm pressing the... I'm trying to spam the mouse and it's now fixed. So this is a pretty simple fix. Any beginner can do this. And I think that's going to be it. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, comment down below. And i see you in the next one. Bye-bye.